This episode of Coffee Talk is brought to you by Burden Accountants and Advisors. We're here sitting at um, Brooklyn Point, tallest building in Brooklyn. And uh, we're here with the developer, Gary Barnett, and its marketer, Ryan Serhant. And uh, we're not necessarily going to talk about this building specifically. We're going to talk about the market and a lot of other things. There's another video coming in where we talk about the building. So I want you to tune in for that as well. But uh, Gary, thank you for joining us today. Welcome. <laughs> Ryan, thank you both for being here. Thanks. Gary, you're a seasoned developer. You've, you know, you've probably shaped the skyline of uh, Manhattan probably more than any other developer in the last uh, 20 years up there with the related and some of the other institutional guys. How has your strategy changed post pandemic? I mean, after the pandemic hit, how has your strategy changed in terms of development? Well, I think uh, the pandemic is really essentially putting a stop to, to new development, uh, certainly for the time period, for the first year. Um, and I think it's really going to have slowed it down dramatically over the next couple of years. And when you talk about supply, I mean, obviously your expertise is the ultra luxury uh, apartments and condos. Do you feel that way for like the one bedrooms and the studios, uh, you know, as well? So I think everything is, is going to be cut back on. I think there will be very little supply. There's some projects that are in the works that will get completed, but almost it's almost impossible to finance a new condo. Rentals are also going to be very hard to get done. So I think for a period of time, it could be another year, it could be two years, it could be three years, we're going to see very little development going on. There's going to be a pain in the construction industries because there will be very little development, but it's good for the overall market because we will absorb the supply that's that's come on the market and it, and it will stabilize and we've already seen I think a stabilization right now. So do you think the cost of construction is going to come down in general? I do think the cost of construction will come down. Which yeah. was peaking like a few years right, ago it was right, very high. Right and it has come down a little bit already. I think it will come down further. I don't think that's going to be uh, the panacea to, to get development going again. We're going to need a period of time for the supply to get absorbed. What are you, what are you estimating in, internally? What are you guys talking I'm about? Actually, I'm actually a little more optimistic than I was, let's say, three months ago, because mm -hmm. we've seen the market in the last two months really react. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I think I would time it almost to the day of the announcement from Pfizer that their vaccine is approved. Right. I, I literally, on that day, we were getting calls from people who were on the fence. They were thinking about buying, not buying, and say, oh, yeah, we're moving ahead. Like, duh, you know, like, we're moving ahead because now you think there's a vaccine and you think things are going to get better. They finally said, you know what, we've hit bottom. Things are going to get better from here. We better buy it while we can. And I think that's really the impetus for what we've seen in the last two months. A lot of people are arguing that this sort of, this sort of a bottom is not similar to the past, but then you see the activity that's happened since the beginning of the new year. Ryan, you just started your firm like literally in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, how has it been for you as a new firm? I mean, obviously you're a seasoned broker, but has it been as a new firm managing and operating and trying to recruit people in this environment? I'd say the, the toughest thing that we had to do was find a place to go uh, in the beginning, because it was in the spring, early summer, and it was tough to coordinate appointments with commercial brokers. So we, we found a spot in Tribeca where we could really prove our concept, where we weren't going to have traditional desking for agents where we were going to have a house concept that was good for clients, that was great networking when the world turns back on and it worked. And so we were just now able to sign our, our new lease in, in Soho for uh, 372 West Broadway. Thanks. I think you guys covered it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we, we had to choke it out of you, but yes, yeah. we did cover it. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say the, um, uh, there, there was definitely moments of fear in the summer going into the business and, hey, I'm going to start a residential real estate brokerage company in New York City when most of my clients were calling and saying, hey, we're leaving, can you rent out or sell our apartment? I was thinking about that too, and you're having to write checks, right? Because yeah. you're taking a lot of obligations. Yep, so I mean, you know, there's, there's payroll, there's insurance, there's there's lots and lots of expenses, but I don't know, I, I've, I've always responded well to, to pressure, mm -hmm. and I just know that like, when you squeeze, things always end up getting better, and COVID, as far as uh, its effect on the real estate market, really felt like a car crash everyone was kind of tumbling through midair. And then the moment we landed, I just knew that the roads would be totally open and mm -hmm. people would just go, mm -hmm. right? So the first place they go to is the beach. <laughs> so we've done a significant amount of business, more than I'd ever anticipated in Florida and the Hamptons. 
Uh, and well, now we just sold the second most expensive home in U.S. history, right? Yeah. In, in Miami. Yeah. In, in, Palm, in Palm Beach. Beach. Yeah. yeah. In Palm Beach. Um, uh, unexpected. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to have people start coming back to the city. So our traffic at Brooklyn Point and the rest of our projects has been really, really, really busy. So knock on wood, but the market is coming back in full force. In New York. Was that the biggest commission check you've ever gotten? Is this on record? Is this? No, ignore the cameras. It's ignore just the me. cameras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll text you later. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting, Gary. You have obviously your pick of the litter when you want to pick somebody to market your properties. You tend to be the, I mean, most expensive, but because it is the, you know, the most exclusive and the uber luxury of the, you know, part of the market. So you get to pick whoever you want to market your properties. And why go with a new, I mean, obviously Ryan is a seasoned guy, but he, his brokerage is new, right? So why not go with a more, uh, you know, known entity uh, in terms of brokerage than Ryan? You know, I think Ryan CERN is, uh, stands out uh, from the crowd. Um, so we, have, we see brokers all the time and, and a lot of times they're brokering you, you know, they're, they're trying to sell you and they, they do sell you and they paint a rosier picture of stuff. and and. And a lot of them just like the glitz and the glamour, and you know, uh, and but you don't you don't really get so much there. Right. And Ryan is not just another pretty face. He's somebody who's really known. I think throughout the industry, somebody who really puts in the time. He works really hard. He knows his business. It's so he's not just relying on you know networking and everything. He, he does he, he does the hard work. And we particularly felt that for Brooklyn Point, which is going to be a, a youthful building. You can look at the design and the and the the unit mix and everything else, and it is in Brooklyn itself, which is by nature more youthful, and that we thought that he would make the best presentation mm -hmm. of this building. Right. And not to say anything against the, the, you know, the other mainline brokers, uh, because we do a lot of business with them and they represent us on other buildings, mm -hmm. but we felt that Ryan would be perfect for Brooklyn Point, and we think it's a, a good bet that we're making on, on him and on his business, and so far it, it's working out great. He's well, since give, he's give come in, we've news. I mean, because well, we, we, well, he can give you news. But since he's come on board, we've definitely accelerated sales here, yeah. velocity, people through the building, but actual signed deals as well. So mm -hmm. I think, tell us how well have you like when did you take the project and what have you done in terms of sales? So we came over. We're talking about Brooklyn Point now. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we came over. Yeah, so we took on sales uh, towards the end of November. Um, we did it by announcing on Instagram Live on the rooftop, which mm -hmm. people had seen the renderings of, but no one's ever actually seen in person. So it was, it was, uh, it was our big push as we came in, to telling them that they had to finish off the roof way before they were anticipating. Make sure it looks beautiful. Make sure it looks great. Uh, and it was really, really cold that day. Um, but we announced the building there. I think we had ten thousand live views, and then something like a hundred thousand shares. Of that video, but that's we the did promo it the, that you were doing. That like I have big news. I have big news. Yeah. That you're building. You're yeah. This, uh, okay. So great. all of a sudden, everybody brought their attention back to the building, mm -hmm. um, and we had a ballerina and a string quartet, a million dollar listing, and so there was a lot of activity there. Um, I think we doubled their website traffic in the first thirty days. Um, we've done just over. 200 tours since we've been on. Um, we've signed something like 15 or 20 deals. How well does Ryan have to perform on this building for you to be like, you know what? Going forward, I want to use this guy. This is an for, intense interview. What, is it? I mean, this is just basic stuff, no? I thought you would want me to ask these questions. We expect him to sell out the building in a year. In a year? Is, is, that, is that doable? I mean, no, uh, honestly, no, it's is not that doable? Okay. <laughs> You never know. It's we a lot of know. units. Anything it's a lot of you. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was. Um, I noticed this pattern where um, everywhere you go, uh, JDS, Michael Stern's JDS, is literally a few blocks away from here. This is the tallest uh, building in Brooklyn right now. But I guess in a few months, uh, 10 DeKalb, is nine, DeKalb. nine DeKalb will be uh, the tallest. And that's literally right there. And Michael is also literally one block away from you at the 157 and Central Park Tower, and also at the two bridges. Is there another one that I'm missing? You guys literally work, he works in pattern with you. There is something to that. Well, like I say, I gotta give him a lot of credit. He's smart enough to know who to copy. And uh, Ryan, you said that in the sense, the beginning of the 2021, New York has really picked up yeah. at like a really fast pace. Yeah. Give me some examples. Give me, tell me what, what you're seeing and what, how you're seeing that, that progress. I think Brooklyn, especially, um, the absorption rate dropped down to like four and a half months for the majority of the properties that are here from almost double that yeah. 
just a couple months ago. Yeah. So things are being absorbed much, much quicker and people are realizing that they're going to be coming back and they're remembering, hey, I don't live in the purchase price, I live in the monthly payment and if I'm gonna rent or if I'm gonna buy, I'm paying someone's loan, I just want it to be my own. Yeah. And if I don't have to pay taxes for 20 years, then that seems like a no brainer. Um, but the numbers are high, but even, you know, because we do a lot of business all over the country and we have a big sales course, we have 6,100 members everywhere and the market in the rest of the country is the exact opposite of what it is in New York. Yeah. Average days on market is six. Right. You know, you put a house on the market, there's 20 cars lining up. Right. You know, there was a, a quarantine really took that out of sight, out of mind idea about moving, yeah. threw it out the window and said, you're gonna be here for the next six months next year, kid? And so yeah. everyone's been moving. There were more sales of homes in the United States in 2020 than there have been since the Great Recession. I think almost six million houses sold. Right. And so New York City is just taking a second and then we'll, I mean, I'm almost nervous for what it's gonna be like in the next six to 18 months. It's a good nervous, but it's yeah. gonna be, it's gonna be a lot. If you say very conservatively, right now the office usage is at 15% in New York City. And let's say very conservatively that that's going to go up to 80%, right? So you have 80% of the people coming back to the office. That still leaves a 20% vacancy in Manhattan. That's 100 million square feet. 100, and you know buildings. You leave a building, they're a live organism. You leave them uh, you know, alone and uh, empty for too long. They start decaying and they start decaying the... No, you know. you, first of all, you're way off with your numbers, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're off, even if I agreed with the 20%, which I don't, okay? The 20% of people not coming back, that, that, that doesn't leave empty office buildings. It leaves uh, corporate space less populated. Mm -hmm. So if, if, a, if a law firm had you know, 150,000 square feet of space and they go out for another seven years in their lease, they're not giving back that space. They can't. Mm -hmm. So instead of, having, instead of having 800 people in the office, they're going to have 650 people in the office, that's still a lot of people in the office. Right. It still keeps the same amount of, of, of leased and occupied space. So office space doesn't disappear mm -hmm. you know, overnight, mm -hmm. okay? People say it's dead. It's never going back up again, you know? Mm -hmm. But it always does. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the stock market. It goes down, we all get panicky, we sell out our portfolio, we take our stupid losses, and then you know, three months later, it's back, right? right? That's what happened in March. As a developer, like, obviously, you want to have your own touches on a project. Would you take on some of the other, there's a lot of developers that are underwater right now. Like, they don't have the pockets that you do. They don't have the, uh, you know, capital that you have. Right. Would you go into another development and take over for somebody? So far, we haven't seen anything that looks so exciting, which is another way of saying that, you know, everybody's circling and looking and bottom fishing, and there's going to be blood on the streets. and. I saw that movie in the Great Recession, 2008-2009, and I had friends of mine that were, for one reason or another, had a lot of cash, and they said, this is going to be like in the, in the I don't know if you remember Amir, but the RTC crisis in the early mid-90s, right, where you could buy stuff for nothing, and they were all waiting to do that, and it never happened. Right. It never went down that low. There's so much liquidity in this world now, so much cash, a lot of it being sloshed around by the Federal Reserve, right, now, right. and doing the right thing, but there's so much liquidity. Well, I don't think we're going to see things really tumble that low that it's going to make sense. Right. So, and then if you buy it, you have to have carrying time, financing time, marketing. It's not, yeah. nothing exciting. You literally um, have the tallest building right now, the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere with the Central Park Tower. We are in the tallest building in Brooklyn that you have. Um, that there, you know, you've really helped shape the skyline of the city in a lot of ways with your uh, buildings. How does that make you feel when you look at it, uh, you know, driving in from Long Island or driving in from New Jersey, when you see your buildings poking out? I'll tell you something, when I look at Brooklyn Point, I see only one thing. I see Ryan and Sirhant, and I think of only one thing. How many units have you sold for me recently, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the call I get from him on his flip phone. So there was an article that recently came out about 432 Park um, that it wasn't um, architecturally sound in terms of how it was designed because the building was swaying and mm -hmm. there's uh, plumbing issues and stuff like that. Does that impact, uh, you know, you, you have you have a very active project with Central Park Tower going up on Billionaire's Row. And Ryan, you're selling those uh, units. Do your clients come to you and point to that article and question, you know, hey, are we going to have these problems? How do you have to deal with stuff like that? Let me just take a break for an advertisement. 
Even our napkins have Brooklyn Point in copper on them. You know, they mentioned it. Uh, it was profiled in New York Magazine. They mentioned it to me in there, and they kept it because it was spicy. And um, uh, but I'll say, the, most people who sent that article to me were active buyers who said, "Hey." Can we use this to get a good deal? <laughs> because it's, it's, that's what it all comes down to. We're negotiating for a very large deal in 432 Park right now that I don't think we probably would have done there um, had that article not come out because that buyer then said, hey, this is, use, use what? this. What? You're use fired. This. Bring why not the SPPT. Hello. <laughs> it's, 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 Hello. I, I'll explain it after. All right. <laughs> Gary, if you had to, uh, I, I want to talk about your uh, uh, CPT real quick. If you market that property for us, tell us. Well, the first thing I wanted to say is that it's, uh, we, we, just to kind of go back to the last thing is, um, you know, building super talls are not, as, are not as easy as building 40 or 50 story towers. Mm -hmm. And those aren't as easy as building 10 or 20 story buildings. The taller you get and the more com com complicated you get, the more complex, you start doing, you know, glass walls instead of uh, brick, brick walls. and uh, the structure becomes much, much more complicated. The elevators become much more complicated. The wind stress has become, you know, much more complex. It is much harder to build those buildings. And you think you just hire the right people and it's all going to turn out fine. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. It, there's actually, you know, there's actually knowledge and, and, and experience and uh, stuff that goes into, into, into building a great super tall. Right. And you know we've done several of them now in New York City, and New York City's every area is different. It's different to build in a in a in a in a, uh, in a uh, temperate climate than to build in the desert, mm -hmm. and it's different to build in a dense, intense city with a lot of other tall buildings around than it is to build you know in a in a small city where you're the only building there. There's all kinds of different things at play, wind stresses at play. So hopefully we've, we've learned that and we think that Central Park Tower will be the best building in the city of New York. Mm -hmm. from, a, from a design viewpoint, from a prestige viewpoint, from a view viewpoint, from a quality viewpoint, amenities, et cetera, et cetera. Until you build your next one. I don't think we're going to outdo that one. No. I don't think so. That's kind of very hard to see. Because I remember you saying something similar about 157. <laughs> you're probably, probably right about that, Amir. Mean, you're probably right about that one. So who knows? Who knows? But and, you know, you managed also in a very, you know, tough period. You also managed to get four hundred million dollars in, fi you know, uh, for financing for Central Park Tower. There is this a trust that the banking community has with you, even in like really tough markets. I mean, I remember in two thousand nine, you managed to pull a real rabbit out of your hat and you know get the money from I think it was from Qatar or uh, from Abu Dhabi. But that was for one. So, but even a smaller project, we had a five thirty five West End Avenue. We probably got the last condo loan, construction loan yeah. done in the city for a couple of years. Yeah, Ryan, you probably, you know, you're very active in the market. Post pandemic, what do you think the, is the neighborhood that's been, that is going to be most impacted by uh, the last year? Um, I think neighborhoods, I, I, I think every neighborhood is, is coming back strong. I, I, it's hard for me to pick one specific neighborhood that I think is going to be, you know, uh, uh, a COVID. Uh, factor where people will say, well, that neighborhood was great pre-COVID, but now yeah. every building is completely different. Every building specific throughout the city. Um, and I think people are just looking for space, right? And given low interest rates and low monthlies, uh, what we're seeing now is we're finding one bedroom buyers figure out that they can actually go into a two mm -hmm. or two bedroom buyers say, I can go into a three and uh, we'll have a kid eventually. And that can be my home office. That's great. And I can get it for how much? So I think that's why the boroughs are going to move a lot. So faster. that that money is coming from somebody. It's either coming from the developers' pockets, or you know somebody's paying for that difference. So like who do you, like who is that going to impact? The fact that people can buy one bed, you know, two bedroom for one bedroom, and can they afford to do that? The poor developers. The, yeah. Yeah, the poor developers. Yeah. Poor developers. Yeah, exactly. They're, 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 they're so, we're, we're losing money on. Um, let's see, I have six active buildings that we have now selling. We're going to lose a little bit of money on one. We're going to lose a little bit more money on the second one. We're going to lose a lot of money on the third one. Three of them, we, we, we're still in the money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that candidness. I want to thank Gary Barnett, Ryan Serhant, and I want to thank uh, Burden Accounting for sponsoring this uh, segment. Thank you.